Soul fam, what up? What's going on? It's Dave from Shooniverse Soul here. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up, hit like, and subscribe if you like what you see. Subscribe so that you can stay tuned for more heat that I'm going to be dropping in the next few weeks. Just because I haven't been on for the last four weeks doesn't mean I haven't been collecting heat. So just stay tuned to the channel for the next few weeks and you'll see some of the heat that I've got. You know, in the sneaker universe, it's actually pretty tough. It's like they're new and then the next week they're not. You know, things are constantly dropping. And just because they're not the latest and greatest doesn't mean that they're not still considered heat. So be sure to stay tuned to this channel and I'll show you exactly what I've been copying these last few weeks. But anyway, this is more of a in memoriam type of video. Um, it's really monumental to me whenever I break out a new pair of sneakers that I really like and I want to keep dead stock and I break out and I wear them. You know, and this model is very significant to me too. And I think it's just time. You know, sometimes it's time to cop or to wear a pair that you actually have to break them in. And hopefully I don't beat them up too much in the process. I like to keep my shoes kind of neat, kind of clean as long as possible. So hopefully I won't wear them out too much whenever I, I take a trip. But anyway, with all that being said, I made this channel really as a docu documentary channel so that in the future I can look back and say, hey, I remember I had those or hey, I still have those and they still look pretty good. You know, this is more of like a documentary channel for me and I'm allowing everybody else to see what I have because I like the historicity of it and the historical side and the documentation part of it. So that's why I started the channel. So let's go ahead and unbox this pair. When I pull the box over, you're probably gonna know what it is immediately. And if not, I'll go ahead and do the unboxing for the people that may not know, because this is one of the coolest boxes I've ever seen personally for a sneaker. Uh, besides the suitcase for the, you know, the Jordan, the Jordans back in the day, but still that's besides the point and that's for uh, another video, but let's go ahead and get started with this unboxing. All right, three, two, one. Like I said, one of the coolest, bo coolest boxes of all time to me. Straight up, for real. Top five, maybe, maybe. It's just the way that it splits open, like so, so cold. And like I said, for those who know the box, they already know what's inside. I'm just gonna put these up front and get this bulky box out the way. Slide this box over here. Well, for everybody who may not know what this is, this is the Jubilee Jordan 11. They just came out in the holiday season of 2020. And that's one thing Nike does every year. They release, usually release a Jordan 11 and they'll either A, like this pair, release a colorway that's in celebration or commemoration of a certain event. Like Jubilee means 25 years. So it's been 25 years since the first Jordan 11 released. So they released this special, you know, special colorway as a, as a memoriam or as a, you know, like a new colorway or a celebration of that. And they also bring out OG colorways during the holidays that people would like. Like for example, in 2018, they brought out the Concord 11s. In 2019, they brought out the Playoff 11s. And then this coming year in 2021, holiday season is gonna be the cool gray 11s, which I'm definitely gonna be trying to cop, for sure, for sure. But they usually do that. And this was the pair that they brought out in 2020. Things that catch my eye immediately about this pair, of course, like all pairs of Jordan 11s, the ballistic mesh. I just love the way that they, that looks as far as the way it contrasts with the patent leather, which is the staple of the Jordan 11, which is why it's one of the great, well, excuse me, let me change that. The greatest sneaker of all time to me, especially certain colorways like this and the Concord 11, that black patent leather, that contrast. One thing that also catches my eye is that Jordan that's along the shoestring uh, tabs right there. I do like that. Some people didn't really like it that much, but I think they wanted to distinguish it just because it is a 25 year commemoration of the sneaker. So I think that's why they put the Jordan on both sides just to show the significance of it. And maybe that was a prototype that they did back in the day. I think they did have the Jordan on the side on one pair. I want to say it's the DMP pack. And I think one of the uh, DMP prototypes had that on the side. I don't know if it came as the finished product, but I do remember seeing that. But that's probably the only colorway that had that Jordan. Of course, this is leather right here to commemorate uh, 25 years, that leather. And you can see that that metal Jumpman logo. But this, to me, stands out the most. Two, two things, actually. Uh, this metal Jumpman logo in the back, which is super cold, super cold. And then that metal 23 that's on the back, too. 
I really like that. I love that actually. Inside of the sneaker, you'll see, if you can see it, it's kind of dimly lit. You got the Jumpman symbol with 25 to celebrate 25 years in there. And of course the bottom, the bottom is actually what I like too. And it's probably the reason why I chose to wear this pair instead of others that I may have is because that bottom to me is going to be a little more durable. Of course, I'm going to have a sole protector on the bottom, of course, to protect the sole. But at the same time, I like the dark gray, the gray color on the bottom that helps it to me, I rather wear this pair than a pair that may have a nice bottom, if you understand what I'm saying, because they yellow or at, are at risk of yellowing, you know, a little bit quicker. But I do like certain things about this sneaker. To me, I do like the metal Jordan across there. I like it. Like I said, it's an acquired taste. Some people didn't like it, but I love it. But <laughs> I love that. The ballistic mesh is just one of the things that make the sneaker that makes the sneaker pop quite a bit. Like I said, I only made this as a quick video to document that they were dead stock at one time and I wanted to have it for documentation for myself in the future so you guys see it, see it in all its glory, but I'm about to bust this thing wide open uh, and wear them. Hopefully I don't wear them too much because like I said, I like to keep my sneakers clean and intact for as long as possible and hopefully they'll be dead stock. They won't be dead stock anymore, but they'll be very near dead stock. And like I said, I'm going to actually make a part two to this video because I'm going to put the sole protectors on them. And like I said, that's just the 3M protection that goes on the sole of the, of the sneaker. And that just protects it from dirt, you know, from different things that you may step in gum, whatever. And that just gives it a 3M protection that, that slides on, that sticks on and peels right off. So that's what I'm going to be doing. That's going to be part two of this video. So stay tuned for that. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and checking out this video. Like I said, it really wasn't much, but just like I said, I wanted to document having these sneakers as a dead stock pair until I wear them in a couple days. So you guys take care. Uh, thank you so much for rocking with me. This is Dave from Universal. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. All right. Now, what up, people? What's going on? It's Dave from Universal here for part two of the video. I'm going to be out of the camera because I want you guys to focus on what you see up front. And right now I'm about to put on what they call the sole protector. So it's a 3M layer that goes on the sole of a sneaker and it protects it from dirt, grime, gum, whatever you may step in. You put it on and you can take it off at any time, essentially. And I want you guys to actually see how I do it. So I'm going to try to get a little bit closer. And there are a couple of steps and a couple of things that you may need. For one, you need a heat gun, a heat gun right here. You need your, the actual sole protector and you need a little bit of time and patience. This is actually the first time that I'm gonna be putting these on. So it might take me a little bit longer than normal to install, but it only takes a few minutes to install these things. So, and then it gives you complete protection on your sole. They have a whole bunch more accessories at soulprotector.com if you wanna go and check their stuff out. And they actually have an IG page too. And I'm giving them a lot of love and I'm not even an ambassador. So that should tell you how much I, I, I put faith in their, uh, in their products. And hopefully after seeing this video, maybe they will make me an ambassador because I have plenty of shoes to put sole protectors on. But anyway, let's go with the first step. You actually got to measure it out and make sure you got your left and rights right. So this is the left shoe and I want to make sure I have the left shoe mold. And I think I do because look at the curve and how it goes in at that carbon fiber. I think I'm good to go. So I'm going to start heating it up. But the first thing I got to do is peel it off. if I can get my fingers in there. But you have two options too. You can actually peel it off and stick it on, or you can heat it up a little bit and stick it on. So that's the sticky side. So what I'm gonna do is put it right here, and then we're gonna put a little heat to it. So let's go. I think that should be enough. You know what? Let's put a little more on there. Let's put a little more on there. I think my wife's taking a nap upstairs. I better stop. But you see guys curling up right there. That's what you want to see. That's when the heat is working and it's ready to go on. So I think that'll be enough right there. Take that sticky side and you put it on the sneaker. And you try to get it as close as possible. And you can repeal it 
and dry it as many times as you like. I think that's good. And now, gotta get the bubbles out. And now, I wrap it around. And I think I might have to add a little more heat to rework it, but I think I got it, so. See if I can get a little more on the edges. See if I can do that. Yeah, it came down, there we go. It's working on. And this isn't the perfect application, but you can see exactly what it does. I'm trying to get some of those bubbles out. Get a good, nice, even feel. Like I said, it's not the best application. I'll probably do better the second time around, but I want you guys to actually see what it does and how it looks. And like I said, this may not be the best application. I'm a super perfectionist and I need to go back and work the edges a little bit. But if you take a dip, take a look, look at the difference between the two. So now you have the three in protection. The only downside is you can't really see the bottom anymore, but the positive side is it's protected. So that's part two of this video. Thanks for rocking with me. And I'm about to do the other side because I'm about to wear these pretty soon. All right. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave from Shooting the Verse. So you guys take care. Later.